you're watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. So he's, he's sitting there and lit that candle and the anointing come on him and, and prophetic anointing. And he says, what can I do? Find out what can I do for this, this gal? Later on, we find out her, her son died, but the anointing uh -huh. came down off that loft. Right, flowed amen. through that man and the anointing met her in her worst darkest hour yes, amen. when you honor the gift that God gives you the anointing will meet you at your point of your greatest need amen. the anointing amen. will meet you at the greatest uh, 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 need that you have in your life whatever it is the anointing will, will show up amen, amen. Yes, it will. amen. amen. <clears throat> When God gave you a pastor, he gave you a, a mouthpiece. He gave you a gift from heaven. He gave you a person of authority. You've got to be willing to come under authority. You remember the centurion? When he spoke, he said, just speak the word. I know about authority. I say something, people do it. I say, come, they come. I say, go, they go. Just speak a word. That's all I need, a word. Speak that word. I understand authority of the word. Amen. Amen. I understand authority. I'm a man of authority. Yeah. And I come under authority. Amen. Yeah. See, to operate in authority, you need to come under authority. Amen. Yeah. If you receive the gift from God or the man of God, you're receiving a gift from God. Amen. Yeah. And the reason why God gives us authority to bring order in your life where you had chaos, maybe in your finances, maybe in your body, maybe in your mind, chaos in your marriage, chaos, God gave you a gift to straighten that all out. Amen. Bring order in your life. Amen. Amen. The anointing you receive is the anointing that will increase in your life. Amen. The anointing you receive is the anointing that will increase in your life. The Shudamite woman received the anointed, the anointed gift. And because she received it or honored it, the anointing became greater in her life. Mm -hmm. Miracles begin to happen. Yeah. Things that she was believing for came to pass. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God gave us pastors. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 3, 15, write it down. It says, and God gave pastors. That means God chooses your pastor. Yeah. God gave you not just a pastor to rule over you, but he gave you a pastor as a gift to help Amen. you, Amen. to be a help. To help what? Solve problems. Amen. I'm a problem solver. Yeah. That's all. Give you the word, fix you up. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 11, I long to see you. See, you, see your face, to be, I, I long, I, I, yeah. and I, I can't wait to come to church so I can see you. Amen. Not because, you know, I think you're so great and you're so pretty, you're so ugly, you're so skinny, you're so fat. I, it's not, a, none, of that, none of that, it's I can see, sometimes I can see in you. Amen. Long to see you, why? Because there's a gift in me to help solve problems in you. Pastors are here to solve problems, so don't go and share your problems with other people that's not anointed to help you in your problems. Amen. 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 Especially rebellious people. Amen. Don't go talking to people that ain't saved and, and they're not tither and you go ask them, what do you think about tithing? That's right. They're not going to solve your problems. They're not going to help you step in the increase. Amen. amen. The anointing that you see, amen, and the anointing that you sow into, you'll have right to. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Or access to. Your, your loyalty to the gift that God gave you will be demonstrated with the loyalty you have towards them. 
the loyalty. There's a, there's a thing called a loyalty. I know that that's really hard for some to grasp. Loyalty. It's important. Yes, it is. Yeah. That God gave you or you're assigned to. As this woman, she recognized the authority on that man. She came under authority. She made room for that authority. Yeah. You have to make room for the authority. Why? Because authority has reward. Amen. 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 There's a reward behind and purpose behind the authority God gives you. It's called reward. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, okay, let's just go. Let's look at another scripture. Go to Matthew chapter 10. We'll start with verse 40. 1040. It says, he that receives me, he receiveth, re receives you, receiveth me, or him that sent me. So, God sent Jesus. Jesus' biggest problem was with those who were familiar with him, and he couldn't do mer any miracles around him because they debated who he was. So, they didn't receive. They didn't get no miracles. They didn't get anything. Why? Because they dishonored. Right. Yeah. To not receive the gift God gives you is dishonoring. Yes, it is. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. He's, Jesus said, He that receive, receiveth you receive me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. Verse 41 says, He that receives a prophet in the name of the prophet receives what? And he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous reward. We're talking about reward. God gave you a gift so you, be, so you if you treat it right, treat the gift right, honor the gift, make room for the authority that's on the office of the gift in your heart, you'll be rewarded. Why? Because you're receiving the one that God sent. If you receive the one God sent, which is a pastor, then you're receiving God. Amen. Not for salvation. I'm saying authority. You're receiving delegated yes. authority. Amen. That's why I tell people, look, honor the leadership that I put in, in place. You, you honor me, do what I tell you to do, but then you balk when it comes to leadership. All right. I don't do that, pastor. Oh, yeah? How about when they say, okay, let's move that chair from over there or over here. Well, I'll tell you, you'd save time if you, if you get a bunch of people to grab that chair and put it over there. And let's all just do it together. And, and No, nobody asks for your opinion. That's right. Nobody asks for, for you know, well, the, if you just be more organized, talk to about leadership, then, then, you know, this would all be, you know, if you'd called me three weeks ago, I could have been there. Uh, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes things happen. That's right, amen. How many times we called Sister Esther and say, es Sister Esther, I'm down here cutting wood and made a mess, and we need to get a crew down here to clean it up. They just cleaned it up the night before, but I messed it up the next day. Right. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Fixing stuff, carving stuff, uh, building something. Right? Putting a new floor in. Hey, hey, we made a mess. It's new. It looks good, but it's a mess. Well, if you'd called me three weeks ago, I could. I would have went down there, but you're unorganized. Uh, yeah. See, and that sounds stupid. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. It's inconvenient for me to go down there right now. Nobody's nobody's asking you to get a reward because it's inconvenient. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Working for God is not always convenient. That's right. Amen. Doing things with a right heart yeah. is important. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Showing honor to, to leadership, to, to the person I put in leadership, or my family. Amen. Amen. Well, your family is not always right. No, I know that. But it ain't none of your business. I work on them, you work on yourself. Amen. Hello. Hello. Well, if you're not going to let me help you fix your problems, you, you can't fix my problems. I'm not going to let you fix my problem. Well, what's your problem? Well, you don't tell me how to raise my kids. 
Okay. That's your problem then. I know people don't like it when I correct their kids. Oh, got quiet in this Holy Ghost place. Well, I'm a spiritual dad of this place, and, and I treat your kids like my kids. People get all fauché and pushed out of shape and get real defensive when it comes to their kids. Even if they're wrong. Because they think their kids are perfect. Am I helping you tonight? It's amazing how people get pushed out of shape because their child got bossed around a little bit. Because you wouldn't boss them right. If you're not going to handle them in church, I'm going to have to. That's why I said this the other day. Showing honor is, is helping protect the anointing. That wall is built there to protect the anointing. When people are become ushers or armor bearers or different things, you're, you're help building the wall, keeping the wall up. So I can rest in the bed. A place of peace. A place of protection. A place of, that's lofty. Man, who do you think you are? I'm just a servant. Just like you, I just got more responsibilities. But there's something called the office of a pastor, and I'm magnifying my office. Why? So you can receive in a greater capacity. It's called a designator. Thank you very much. You get the reward that's on. The reward is the anointing that's on the pastor. The anointing that's on, the anointing means burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. Yes. Anointing. Isaiah 10, 27 talks about the anointing destroys yokes. There's yokes yes. in your life that need to be destroyed. Amen. And that's why God gathered you around this group so that you can have a, a, a yokes broke off your life. Yes. And destroyed where they don't come back again. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And that's in my office. All right. Now, we have always honored uh, other gifts. We, we, don't, we don't say our gifts is greater. We, when we had different gifts come into this church, whether it be apostles, that's what Dr. Ed was, Dr. Nancy. I believe she's that. And, and uh, you know, we've had pastors. We've had evangelists. We always honor them. Yeah. We've always tried to teach you how to honor them. Yeah. Amen. 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 And the same way you honor them, you should honor your gift. Amen. Go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. You getting anything out of this? Yes. Hebrews 13, verse 7. Everybody look at it. Is it hot in here to y'all? Yes. I'm kind of warm. If one is warm, it's hot. <laughs> Whew, we're having a heat wave. Remember them that have rule over you. Nobody likes that scripture. Well, rebellious people don't. If you're submissive, you love this. I love this scripture. Say, I love this scripture. I like all the scripture, but I like this one a lot. Oh, yeah, y'all, I'm convinced now. Remember them that have rule over you. It says, who has spoken unto you the word of God. Is that what I do? Yes, sir. I speak to you the word of God. Are you reading with me? Yes, sir. Huh? You're talking about me, a yes. pastor, whose faith follows. Now, remember them to have rule. The word rule ha- means authority. Yeah. How do you, how do you, you need to ac- ask yourself this question. How do you respond to authority? Okay. Remember them. That word remember means honor. Remember or honor those who have authority over you. Amen. Remember or honor those who have authority. The word honor means to, re, to bring a high esteem, to make weighty, to bring into remembrance. Yes. That's what that means. To honor those who have authority over you. Yes. Why? Because you'll receive honor. Right. So what's the reward of, of uh, you honoring the righteous man or your pastor. What's the reward? 
you get what comes out Amen. my mouth. The reward of the word. Now, what have we been preaching to you about the word? Yeah. Greater is he is in you than he's in the world. Amen. You can do all things through Christ. Yes. Amen. Nothing's impossible with them that believe. Yes. You can have faith that moves mountains. Yes. Put the devil under your feet. Uh-huh. Walk in love. Yes. Amen. Come on now. Yes. You can have that. Amen. Give and it shall be given Amen. to you. Good measure, pressed down, cheek together, running over, shall men. What? Yes. Huh? Yes. Here comes your promotion. Yes. Here comes your increase. Yes. Here comes your house getting paid off. Amen. Here, here comes you, your new car. Yeah. The anointing comes downhill from the office. Amen. Yeah. The office that you put in a lofty place or a place of honor that you made room yes. for. Yes. Amen. Is this helping you? Amen. Who has spoken in you the word of God? Well, that's me. Consider the end of their conversation, meaning consider the end of my faith. Have you ever been around me and, and I said, we're going to do this in Jesus' name. I know we ain't got the money for it, but let's just believe together. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about this today. We spent, I don't know, when it's all said and done, close to $40,000 on that parking lot out there. Paid for it. The church. Y'all did it. We spent... 25000 plus on a new roof. Amen. We spent at least, I, I would say, the job was worth sixty, but I think we put, I don't know, twenty five, thirty, dollars in doing a new foundation. Okay. We repainted this, redid all these walls, put new carpet. That was ten grand. Amen. New chairs. That was uh, another eight. eight, ten grand, something like that. Amen. I started adding this all up. We, yeah, yeah. My God, yeah. we put new floors. All through the bathroom, all the way in all the rooms, yeah. put new new floors in all the business offices. Amen. Amen. New lighting, new what? Yes. New what? New oh my God! New cam cameras. That cam was fifteen thousand dollars. And that new switcher board. Because I wrote it down. Believe for it. Amen. Called it out. Amen. Asked y'all get in agreement. Yes. That's Amen. the end of my faith. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then I'm telling you, you can do the same thing. Amen. That's just an example. That's the reward. Amen. I said it. It came to pass. Amen. My God, you can say some things and it's going to come to pass. Amen. If you say it and believe it, yes. same anointing that you've been sowing to, you have right to. You have access to the anointing that's on the office. Not just the man, it's the office. Yes. And if I magnify my office, it gives glory to him. Yes. If I honor my office, it gives honor to him. Yes. Yes. Everything I do, I intended to make sure it's seed that I can put in the kingdom, the good gospel soil, and I get a harvest. Amen. I just said something. Amen. Watch it come to pass. Yes. Planted seed. Jan and I, we were believing for a house and, and on purpose knew that there was a meeting that we couldn't go to and, and God said so to that meeting. Just because you're here at the house and you can't go to that, you can sow to it and name your seed. And we did. We, we said our house is coming and it came. That's, right. Amen. That's the end of my faith. Consider the end of my faith. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. We believe by faith, spoke it out, come to pass. You can do that too. Right. Amen. You got a problem with your body? Name of Jesus. I believe the word is true. He sent his word to heal me. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. So therefore, it wasn't I was healed. I am healed. And I receive that now in Jesus' name. Amen. I've had to do that. You can do that. I don't feel guilty if it, if it don't happen for you like it did for me. Well, then you start thinking, well, that's because you're the pastor. you got more anointing on you. No, no. You have access to the same anointing I do. That's right, amen. And if you'll just start capturing every word and, and treat it as those words are from God, from heaven, I'm going to honor those words. I'm going to receive those words, and I'm going to have a 
this may be a faith project, but it's going to come to pass. Amen. Don't you ever feel guilty. Don't let the devil make you feel guilty. If you come to church and you don't have no seed, I tell you, I, I've come to church and I didn't have nothing to give. Had to get in my dig, dig deep in, in all kinds of weird places like cars and couches and just to have something to take to church. But that's where it started. And I didn't, I didn't let the devil make me feel guilty. Some people won't call me up and won't let me know they're going through sickness or fighting some symptom because they, they, they feel guilty about it. Don't you ever feel guilty. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You need to tap into, designate uh, 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 of, of heaven's flow in your life, pull the trigger on it, in Jesus' name, say, Pastor, get in agreement with me. I'll tell you what, Dr. Jan and I, when we get in agreement, that's it. Amen. If it takes three seconds or 300 years, uh -huh. we don't back off. Never lived 300 years, but we, it, I'm just saying, we don't back off of our agreement. 